There are two basic steps in the Morris, the double step and the single step. They frequently occur together in the same figure. A common sequence is two double steps, two single steps, feet together jump. Hand movements vary and have to be synchronized with the stepping. It's easier with a stick when you don't have to worry so much about the hands. Let's start by looking at a double step starting on the right foot. Right, left, right, hop, left, right, left, hop. So it should look like this. One, two, three, hop, one, two, three, hop. Notice that the knees are not lifted. The heel of the foot in the air only just goes past the heel of the other foot. A good exercise is to just switch feet in mid-air, like this. Once you can do that easily, then add in the hops. One, two, three, hop. One, two, three, hop. So don't use these muscles to lift your knee up. Just let the upper part of the leg swing freely as you dance and the lower part swing freely from the knee. If you practice on the spot, be careful not to get into the bad habit of lifting your knees up like this. Instead, practice dancing while traveling. You need to make the double step part of your muscle memory so you can do it without thinking. Because then you need to add the hand movements. This is an Adderbury style where the hands go round and up. This is a field town style where the hands just go down and up. Each tradition has its own hand movements, but they need to be synchronized with the footwork. Here's field town again from the side. And the hands go round and round in Badby. There are stylistic variations. One of them is to ring the bells while your foot is in the air on the hop. One, two, three, hop, ring the bells. Each time you hop, you shake the foot in the air to ring the bells. Make sure when you're traveling, you move forward, 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 hop, forward, 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 hop. It's a very common fault that people let one of the legs trail behind. Keep moving forwards. The single step is much easier. It's just one hop, two hop, one hop, two hop. Some people have difficulty with it, so I get them to practice skipping like they did as a child. If they just go down the room going step, hop, step, hop, then they soon get the feel of it. Don't use these muscles to lift your knee up into the air. The upper part of the leg swings freely as you move, the lower part swings freely from the knee. Practice just changing feet in mid-air, with the leading foot only just going past the trailing foot, and then add in the hops to make it a single step. Try it with simple hand movements just down and up to get used to doing it. You need to build the single step into your muscle memory so you can do it without thinking. If you practice on the spot, you may end up lifting your knees. Don't do that. Practice doing it traveling, and then there's less chance of you making that error. And then add the hands in and get used to doing it. One stylistic variation is to shake the leg that's in the air so that you ring your bells on the hop. Another is to do a sort of cycling movement by drawing the foot back as it leaves the ground. Hand movements vary by tradition. In Cantia they go down from together at the waist to out at the sides. In Field Town they just held out at the side. Many sequences end with feet together jump. You just jump into the air with both feet together and land with both feet together. 
Your arms and hands can help you get lift. Put the hands out to the side and then pretend you're scooping water up. This is called a gather. Gather and then lift the arms right up into the air and they lift your body with it. Notice how the knees bend as preparation. Bend the knees slightly, put the arms out and start the gather. Put them all together and you should get lots of nice lift. So here's a complete field town sequence, two double steps, two single steps and a feet together jump. You'll notice that the footwork is stylized going backwards on the single steps. We'll cover that in the field town tutorial. Not all sequences end in feet together jump. Here's an adlibri sequence which ends with two capers. Two double steps, two single steps, two capers. The caper is a common move in the Morris. Start by practicing a spring. Step onto one foot and leap onto the other. As you put the first foot down, bend the ankle and the knee as though you were making a spring. Then use the tension in that spring to lift yourself off the ground into the air. As with the jump, if you use your arms, you can give yourself more lift. Gather and spring. If you raise your knees up and go higher, it's called a caper. The arms go round and round, make it a big movement from the shoulder and spring as high as you can, lifting the knees up. This is a contrast to double steps and single steps where the knees stay down. While mostly hands go round and round in capers, in field town they go down and up, starting with a down. Double capers are caper, hop, caper, hop, with the arms going round twice for each one. Caper, hop, caper, hop, caper, hop, caper, hop. It's important when you caper not to stop after each one. This looks terrible. What you're trying to do is make it a continuous flowing movement. The arms keep going round and round smoothly and you bend your knees as you land so you can spring off the floor again. Make it one smooth continuous movement, one caper leading into the next. Morris Dancer's heels should not touch the ground. Be up on your toes with your centre of gravity forward so you can get nice high smooth capers. Most figures are made up of double steps, single steps, jumps and capers. But choruses often have side steps in them. There are two main side steps, the open one and the closed one. In an open side step, you step to the side, opening up the space between your legs. In a closed side step, you cross your legs, closing the space between your legs. It's just one, two, three, hop, just like a double step, side, behind, side, hop, side, behind, side, hop. This is what it looks like with Adderbury or Badby styling. Make sure that you get that foot behind. If you just step to the side and close, that's a chassis and there are no chassis in the Morris. It's step behind step and hop. Step behind step and hop. Here it is again with field town styling. In the closed side step you turn your whole body and bring your foot across but it's still one two, three, hop. 
Here it is with Litchfield styling. One, two, three, hop. One, two, three, hop. And this is how we would do it with Field Town styling. So that you don't injure your ankles or your knees, you need to turn while you're in the air. So you turn on the hop. One, two, three. And then as we hop, we turn. One, two, three, and turn. One, two, three, hop and turn. You need to travel, as in a corner crossing, you turn your whole body to aim it at the direction you're going. And then you just do one, two, three, hop. Again, it's important that the foot goes behind. As you step forward, lock the other foot behind the leading one. So it should look like this. This is Field Town styling. You could call an ordinary sidestep a three-step, one, two, three, hop. There is also a seven-step, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hop, making sure the foot goes behind. A field town seven step involves bringing both hands into play part way through. You start with one, two, three, four, and on four you open out into a, what's basically a double step. You need to start each figure or chorus on the correct foot. In East Kent Morris, our default is to start everything on the right foot. But there are some traditions, like Ilmington, which are called outside foot traditions, where you need to start on the correct foot depending on where you are. If you want to go left, you start on the left foot. If you want to go right, you start on the right foot. But in a foot up and down, you start with the foot furthest from your partner, so it's different on each side of the dance. If the figure involves a turn to the left, and I start on my right foot, then I go one, two, three, hop, one, two, three, hop, and my right foot is in the air. Then when I try to turn to my left, I get what is known in the Morris as a nutcracker. If on the other hand, I start with my left foot, then after two double steps, my left foot is in the air and I can turn easily. So it looks like this. Start left, left foot in the air, turn left easily. So, what do you do if you realise you've started on the wrong foot? If you're doing two double steps, just change the second double step into either two single steps or four steps. That will get you back on the correct foot. Here's an example with two single steps. I want to go left. I know I should start with my left foot. I realise that I've accidentally started with my right foot. So after the first double step, I just switch to two single steps and then my left foot is ready. An alternative is four steps. Again, I want to start with my left and go left, but I accidentally start right. After the first double step, just do four steps and the left foot is ready. Another way to recover is to add a faint step. This is a quick step inserted between the other steps to get you back on the correct foot. Here's an example from Bampton. We're going back on the left foot when we should have gone on the right. So we do a quick step to get onto the right foot for the next movement. Here it is from the side. We're going back on the left. We realize it's wrong. And there's that quick step to get us onto the correct foot. You may have noticed that in most of the demonstrations, I did a quick step on the other foot before starting the sequence. This is known as the hop on the anacrusis. It's a faint step that gives you momentum or helps you keep your momentum going and is very important in the Morris. So I want to go forwards. I want to start on my right foot. So I'm going to hop on my left foot to help me surge forwards. 
Get your centre of gravity forwards and your heels off the ground. Try this exercise. Raise your hands, take them out to the side, lower them. This raises your chest up. Forward, side, down. Feel yourself lifted. Get used to that feeling. Get your centre of gravity forward and surge. Watch that hop on the left foot to get me going. I hope you've enjoyed this video. The key to success is practice. Practice your double steps and single steps whenever you can. You have to make them into muscle memory so you can do them without thinking before you can work on your hands and your figures. You can contact me at the address shown on the screen and there are lots more tutorials on the website.